Can an ironclad run really do well if Mark of Pain and Busted Crown are the only boss relics? Watch and find out. We go, as they say, again. Got seven max health for a rare relic, one of my favorite trades to make. Wondering if we can turn this into a four elite act with a decent rare relic. Hmm, I don't know. Does that one count as decent? Guess we can find out. It's a dead branch. We shot one of the all-time greats of ironclad relics. The dead branch says, get a new card every time a card is exhausted. And that can be, well, all the time. Just every day. Nice draw. Good job, me. Oops. Should have done that first. Forgot the slimes were beneficial. Carnage is big damage and says exhaust, whereas anger simply does damage. I'll take the carnage here. Perfectly good first card. Could take money or we can get rid of a card. I say let's lose a card. Get rid of one of these strikes here. Especially since we might get those seven hit points back from the burning blood. Doesn't mean we will, mind you. Highest clad streak of the challenge so far is uh, 10. My best clad streak overall is 16. Take a shrug here. Cleave is also fine. I like the shrug. I'm actually happy we get a bonus fight. Go Carnage Strike. Cards that say exhaust. All of them do. Although I think disarm is probably the best. Good against our act boss. And of course with the dead branch. It'll make a new card. That seems pretty good as well. Aya Aya indeed. Ow. Elixir, exhaust, any number of cards in our hand. Well, that's just peachy. Please don't say corruption. I guess we took a couple defensive cards. We should grab a bit more damage here. So I think anger is pretty good. My win rate in against the storm. I don't know. Pretty high so far as we haven't yet lost a queen's hand mode playthrough. I think with this elixir, we can mess with the first elite. Let's go for elites here. I want relics galore. I want them. Hey, this turned out. Wake up. Tempting, but they're not necessarily going to work, so whatever. Even more tempting. No, I think I just get rid of all five here. 
Yeah, let's uh, let's delete all of this. Okay. Now we're talking. Hmm, cute. Um, I want Shrug next turn, though. So let's just go power through Immolate and flood my own deck with statuses. Questionable. As for what happened to our sound, I couldn't begin to speculate. I think it's Bash Strike over Immolate Strike. For the Vuln this turn. Although I think we don't get a kill barring a really lucky draw. No, not even Carnage Strike was enough. Looks like we don't kill next turn either, huh? Hmm. Slightly concerning. But wait, I can dual wield strike and play both of them? The power. Amazing. Welcome back, music. Get the white bee statue, guaranteeing a potion after every combat. Fantastic. If I want to fight four elites, that's going to help a ton here. We want a barricade. Barricade is amazing with Dead Branch in general, but I don't think it's a good idea now. Probably we just want to take something with half-decent damage, Twin Strike here, to make sure the elites continue to be okay. I think that's the Twin Strike here. <clears throat> you don't have to attack me, you know. Alright, Dead Branch, what do you got? Double Tap. Wouldn't call that very good here. Oh boy. Do I tank 13 now, or do I split and risk a double 12s next turn? 53 minus 18 is 35, which actually is not a split. Oh. So I can't split. Oh. Well, crap. I can't even use the vulnerable next turn. Bummer. How much is double bash? Oh wait, you're right. Um, that would be 8 plus 12. That's 20. So we can split, although it's a bad split. Yes, double bash is more damage than bash strike or triple strike. I'll take it. This turn could be worse, though. Not too bad. Not too bad. Hmm. Gonna block. Double tap, twin strike, anger strike is what? 32? Yeah, it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. I can't exhume Carnage and double tap it either. Oh well. Take three is fine. I guess I should have killed. No, this one's disarmed. Strike, take 10. Or YOLO a slime. I think we just take the Bash Strike line. Although, worst case is only take 12, right? Because I can still double defend. Hmm. Actually, yeah, let's see what's in here. Okay, so we're back to the kill one line. That's fine.
8 plus 14, 22. We're out of here. Spooky fight. That said, we do get a guaranteed potion, which is pretty good. And I don't mind a reckless charge here. Putting a dazed into the draw pile will make cards with dead branch. Gives us good reason to pick up status-related powers, too. Now, these three I can get behind. This is a much easier fight. They're going to flood the deck with dazes. Well, that's no problem because... We have Dead Branch. And Strike Strike Reckless exactly kills this one, so I don't need to use the Attack Potion. Don't think I will. This is why you always target the enemy with the least health, because sometimes you get exact kill when it would matter. If you target the wrong one, well, that doesn't happen. Actually, you shouldn't say always. Yeah, it could be worth doing discrete math in the, with what you have in the draw pile to figure out whether you might hit the breakpoint for the enemy or not. But as matter of habit, good to target the one with the least health. I'll risk it with a grit first here. I want to know if I can play the card I make. Eh. Sure. One health for draw one seems worth it here, given that we could take 10 with a bad draw. Cool. All right, we get another elixir. Amazing to find two of these with the dead branch. And some mediocrity that we don't need. The zero upgrade act one says uh, searing blow is not so good. We need a real fiend fire, that's for sure. How about a real meat on the bone? If we're at or below half health at the end of combat, heal for 12. This should be no problem then. Easy peasy. Okay, well, this is getting stupid. Do we take the toxic egg, upgrading all skills from here on out, or do we take the medical kit, allowing us to play status cards and make new random cards immediately? Yeah, I think that's medical kit. And then feel no pain to go with it. And I can still remove. Even better. You love to see it. Hello, Mr. Nub. Welcome to your doom. It's me. I'm your doom. Presumably. We'll see about that. Not actually that likely to get a kill next turn. Maybe I should play the Feel No Pain. Let's do that. <laughs> Even better, then. Nice. Bunch him. Block for 12, take 6. Or I could Elixir to full block. I'm going to get new potions anyway. Let's just do it. Two extra cards on turn one is excellent. And 
And seeing red with dead branch is also excellent. Gain two energy and make a new card. You'd love to see it. Hmm. A little lousy, but could be worse. Could have used the explosive pot here too, I guess. No need though, with the meat on the bone. We just need to make sure we take uh, two more damage here. We have that. <laughs> I'll bite. Let's do it. Tiz, thanks for the eight months of support. And Tom asking for a dad joke for the crowd. Where does the ironclad like to fl to frolic? In his barrack glade in the forest. No refunds. Dr. Noodles MD, thanks for the prime sub and the 38 months of support. Can't kill. Let's disarm then. Make this attack a bit weaker. Okay, this is already getting silly, I see. Another feel no pain? We already have the barricade. Let's do it. Gamer Cat says, how do you come up with so many dad jokes? Well, as you just saw, or heard perhaps, um, I'm not discriminatory about the quality thereof. That's how. <laughs> hmm. I think we disarm here. Could play the Reckless Charge, but then we lose uh, Art of War for next fight. Definitely going to use at least one of these explosive pots. Let's disarm. Double Reckless Charge. Okay, well, wait a minute. No, that I want, though. That's worth losing an energy for. Give me the days now, not later. I can play them immediately for three block and a new card. And an Immolate. Easy game, easy life. We're still in Act 1? Yeah. We're still in Act 1. And it's getting dumb. Peace pipe. Oh my good lord. It's getting really dumb. Fiend fire. Here we are. Exhaust your hand to deal damage for each card. Exhausted. Let's try to do a zero upgrade run. Maybe. Just tote cards. Never upgrade a dang thing. Kaboom. <laughs> Barricade could theoretically do really good work for us here. But only if we can actually get it in play, which sounds like a challenge.
convenience. I'm going to get bonked next turn, aren't I? Seems likely. Oh well. Take one hit now and then it's over, presumably. Wait a minute. Bonk. Got him. Easy. <clears throat> Easy game. Easy peasy. Tank that hit, no prob. Bonk. Bonk. BG. We're offered Berserk, Demon Form, and Feed. Feed could scale our max health here and is very, very strong. With a barricade and double feel no pain, we can presumably set up situations to feed on things too, to make this run all the more durable. I do like that somewhat. Corruption would have been the uh, ideal rare to find, but it's, there's no sign of it here. I'll take a feed. As for our boss relic, it's Snekawai, Pandora's Box, or Mark of Pain. Pandora's box would only be six transforms, but that's still pretty tempting here, as it could give corruption. Uh, wait, Mark of Pain? Wait, Mark of Pain is amazing! Hold on. Two wounds in the draw pile? You shouldn't have. Those are perfect cards. Yeah, give me the Mark of Pain. Get in here. Oh, hi, Mark. Love it. Absolutely love it. What do I think of the biggest takeaways from clad streaming so far, or clad streaking? Character feels like they're very feast or famine. You either find something really busted and you can exploit it, or you kind of have to struggle your way through. And I think part of the important part of uh, streaking together wins with clad here is recognizing when you're in a famine situation and you have to approach a more step-by-step -step solution to each and every fight just to get a little bit longer, a, bit, a little bit more longevity. Because just surviving until you win is kind of how clad can prevail. You mean feed or famine? Yeah, that too. That too. How often do you get a run where Mark of Pain is an insta-take? Not too often. I'm going to risk this burning elite. Let's do it. Bird nerds. Well, guess what? Fiend fire. Hmm. I see we got dual wield here. We might be in this fight a little while. Oh 
my. Okay. Um, eat. Eat you. Then exhume the feed. There we go. Dual wield the feed. And we get to eat all three birds here. Delicious. Nine max health from the first fight. Feels good. Guess I don't need liquid bronze, huh? Tastes like chicken. Tastes like guacamole. Delicious guacamole. form is the biggest trap card. I don't disagree. It is definitely a definitely a card that is easy to get weighed down by. Certainly not always good. Dead Branch makes its own corruption. No assembly required. And its own juggernaut. Why not, really? Just be glad I'm not stalling for armaments, too. I don't think I want Metallicize. Certainly don't want Clash. Five max health? Sure. Give me more max health. Who cares if we lose some health? We got regen potion. We're fine. We're totally fine. Hmm. Interesting turn one. Let's take the Art of War. Nice. And now the big hit. Except I blocked for a bazillion. So too bad. Good fire. How's it going, Mozgon? Life's good. 
This says exhaust a card. That's a pretty good reason to take it here. Even says block on it. Another potential chance to get more than one feed, although I really doubt it's going to happen. That would also require me to use uh, not immolate right now, and I think I'm going to use immolate right now. These three are pretty, pretty dangerous. Has the clad challenge updated any of my general card tier list rankings for this character? I now value Heavy Blade and Twin Strike over Sword Boomerang, which I don't think I did before. Really come to uh, devalue the random targeting on the Sword Boomerang. We'll play Barricade here. Okay, don't kill them both. Yeah, I found it really important that it's consistent where your damage goes when you're in multi-enemy fights. It's really easy for things to get very out of control very quickly. Oop, bot's not bad. We've had first True Grit, yes, but what about... No, I don't want second True Grit. How's it going, Nikovax? How does this deck work? Great question. We're a bit of a weird deck here because we have this relic called Dead Branch. Perhaps one of the strongest relics in the game on Ironclad, especially, saying whenever you exhaust a card, add a random card into your hand. So the goal of the deck is add a whole bunch of cards that have the exhaust keyword, and then we just get a whole bunch of extra cards for free. And then we stack bonuses for playing exhaust effects, the Feel No Pains. And we have a barricade to keep the block. But uh, kind of the core concept of the deck is lol random. So you're going to see a lot of weird nonsense happening momentarily. Wondering about bloodletting here. We have plenty of health to spare. More energy is not a bad idea. Yeah, I'll take a bloodletting here. So, 210 health, Book of Stabbing. How does this go for the book? Bibin Blam, thanks for the two months of support. Much love to you. Okay, no loss of beam fire. Currently, I'm getting extra energy next turn. I guess I'll just play Defend here. We have two disarms for the Book of Stabbing, so I'm not afraid of this fight if it goes long. Although, not a very good turn one, huh? Alright, now I will take that Fiendfire. It's a bit better. Clash was almost playable there. Almost. Draw order sucks. That's all right. Getting outplayed here, it's true. Thankfully, I am not afraid of wounds. Here we go. Wounds? Hello? <laughs> Can I have some? Would love some wounds now. If I could just draw a few wounds, that'd be great. Okay, a bit of a tough fight, but we're through. 
We now have a ceramic fish giving us money per card we add. And we could take one of these, although I don't think we want to. Yeah, Wild Strike actually being, I would say, okay here. It's no, uh, it's no power throw, though, that's for sure. Let's keep token. Remove stinky strike cards that no one wants. And let's also keep fighting elites, because I'm quite confident we can do so with these relics. The extra health from the meat on the bone ought to be spectacular here. Hmm. Could lose my feed, huh? Guess so. Cool with that. It's possible we get that back. Do I ever feel like Dead Branch Dark Embrace is too much? It definitely can be. Yeah, together they can be too much. And prevent you from drawing cards that you might want to draw, but... I think one Dark Embrace with Dead Branch is often reasonable. Behold the blockening. Second win. There's the exhume for the feed. Okay, sweet. Very good. And we can just keep playing entrench to get harder and harder to kill here. We're not done yet. That's what they all say. Delicious. Mummified Hand, a great relic alongside the Dead Branch. If we play a power, then a random card in hand becomes free. And as the Dead Branch continually generates powers, we're going to continually get free cards. We're also offered a Body Slam Plus, which does ridiculous giga damage with Double Feel No Pain Barricade here. So I'll take that too. Yeah, this is a, a, a truly godlike relic bar. Add... we. In order to keep this up, we'd have to add something like Gambling Chip Incense Burner as the next couple of relics. Speaking of, Delforming Clay, that's not Gambling Chip, but is just as good, arguably, generating a three block on the next turn each time we lose health. Very good with Barricade, especially. Um, particularly if you're taking Beat of Death damage from Heart. Oak the Strike. All right, Book of Stabbing rematch. This time, Feel No Pain is not on the bottom of the deck. Feels a bit better. Here we go. Don't think we want to barricade here, as we're not generating any extra blocks. Let's go Spot Weakness, Uppercut, Anger. Perfectly full block. And then we can go feel no pain, feel no pain. Get all wound up. Delicious. Much better fight than last time. 
Strike Dummy. Cards containing the text Strike. Deal three more damage. And here's a power through. Gain 15 block. And put two wounds directly into our hand. That's exactly where we want them. And we find a giant book. Not just a regular sized book, but our giant book. Full of weird writing about an ancient named Niao. The Ancient of Resurrection Niao is exiled to the bottom of the spire. Seeking vengeance, Niao blesses outsiders, using them for her own purposes. Those resurrected by Niao remember only fragments of their past selves, cursed to fight for eternity. Obtain the book. We get an enchilada. The start of each combat, add a random power card to our hand that is free and then makes another card free also. Seems good. Hmm. Not so bad. like it. Play Twin Strike? No, it's not a guarantee, but it's an improvement. This mummy Hand is ridiculous. Welcome to Dead Branch. Absurd. Good kind of absurd, I think. Second Wind. Even more absurd. Exhaust all the non-attack cards in our hand. Get blocked for each one. The combo forms. Oh. Hmm. Oh, we already have an upgraded card. All right, we broke the seal. Let's make Barricade cheaper then. And Toke. I'm sorry, Anger, but your time has come and gone. Would we take a Corruption? We sure would. It would be very good. Have a Corruption. All right. Okay, this part's not so good, though. Ow. Um, what if I gambled away this stuff? That's more like it. That's more like it. Okay, good talk. Holy crap. Dead Branch, why are you so dumb? Tons of powers in play, and to scale by virtue of having all that stuff down. It's pretty good. After debuffs the crap out of us, five turns of weak, vuln, and frail, but I don't think we care even a little bit here.
Which like, was only hitting for 19. Kind of sad, really. What is my plan for the Awakened One with all these powers? Awakened One shouldn't be too hard because even though we have powers, we also have disarms, which counteract the powers. So I think the disarm will solve all our problems. We're also going to end up at such a high level of power overall that the Awakened One, even with tons of strength, won't be able to threaten us because we'll have hundreds of block. on that one. Get a fairy in a bottle? That's not too bad. Impervious fiend fire or a re uh, impervious feed or a real fiend fire. With the barricade, I do quite like impervious here, especially since we have body slam too. Just generate a whole heck load of block. Keep it all and use it as our win con. Let's do that. Gain tons of block. And this is a rare but very good Busted Crown. Gain one energy at the start of our turn, but we get less choices from future card rewards. We're mostly just making random cards anyway, so I don't think Busted Crown is too bad. We could also go for a Transform slash Upgrade 3 on the Astrolabe, although we've already removed all of our strikes. We could get rid of Bash, Twin Strike, maybe a Defend. But let's take a Busted Crown. Yeah, Mark of Pain, Busted Crown, overwhelmingly powerful run. That's uh, that's not something I can say I've had before. It's kind of nuts, actually. Like it. You die, sir. Can't feed on the stinky darklings unless uh, all of them are dead at the same time. Here we go. you feed I'll be back okay here's feed strike. No thanks. We want an elixir? It's pretty good with a dead branch. Sure, I'll take that over the fairy because the fairy is never getting used, let's be honest. Not gonna happen. We get ambushed by the shopkeeper right before the shop. Actually, here's a little fun fact for you. Um, if you if you're leaving a shop into an event room, that event room cannot be a shop. So the game won't give you back-to-back -back shops randomly in this way. Which means the only way to get back-to-back -back shops is to have a random shop before a normal shop, which we just got. Good for us, I think. Do we want the Abacus? I don't think so. RNG fix doesn't uh, solve that one? No, I don't think that was correlated randomness. I think that's a deliberate design choice.
Might just remove here. This defense can go. Actually, this twin strike can go too. Can you get two shops in a row if both are events? I believe also no. Oh, there's the gambling chip. All right. I'll play your game. That thing is pretty OP, allowing us to discard any number of cards on turn one. Note that we have eight cards on turn one. Yes, you can even gamble the Incaridian power if you want to. More like lame. Be gone. Give me that event though. Falling. Lose defend, lose barricade, lose carnage. You know, I was just thinking about losing some defense here. Be gone, defend. We land with extreme grace before continuing on. Extreme gracefulness. Okay, that's getting played. Seems like a good turn. All right, pretty good turn one. Block for 60, get uh, three powers in play. Seems all right. Do it. Some more energy, please. About seven energy this turn. Sounds good to me. Eight by seven is fifty six, right? Yeah. Double. We can now dig for relics at rest sites. I guess we're done toking. Cool. Heart of Iron is very good, especially with the Metella size. Although, is it dupe pot elixir good? It's not. It's not that good. Give me a relic then. The Regal Pillow. Okay, maybe that one's not it. Have I ever had a run with all the rest site relics? Well, actually, fun fact here is that uh, it's not possible to get all three of them. 
Their game has a limitation coded in such that once you find any two of the rest site relics, you won't be offered the third one. It'll get skipped over or rerolled or whatever you want to interpret it as. I believe this was originally because they did not want there to be five buttons on the rest site thing, but then they later added the option to recall, which is a fifth button. So I'm actually not sure why you can't get them all. But yes, uh, the game is, is coded to limit you to two of three. You will not get the third one. Yum Yum Decat says, you also can't dig up rest site relics. Is that correct? I think that might be correct. I'm fairly certain you also cannot get the rest site relic as the bonus relic from the Black Star. Specifically to avoid situations where the Black Star generates two rest site relics when you already have one. Thus giving you three. Which, again, does not feel necessary, but it is what the devs chose to do. Matryoshka doesn't have the same limitation because the Matryoshka relic can only generate common and uncommon relics. So they didn't have to code in the exception there. Where did I learn all this garbage? Uh, <laughs> over a long period of time. Various sources from other players, some from just encountering stuff in the wild. You know, around. Yeah, painstakingly over thousands of hours, I guess, is the other answer. like that it's upgraded, but uh, no. I secretly wrote all the code for this game. Now that's a good answer. I like that answer. No meal ticket for us. We've already got our healing relic. Can we beat Reptomancer? Not with this turn one, we can't. Let's try that again. That's more like it. Now we're talking. Boom. First of all, how dare you? You think wounds will stop me? You fools. You're only making me stronger. <laughs> Got him. Letter opener, one of my favorite uh, dead branch relics. Every time we play three skills, we deal five damage to all enemies. Also, just like the last Busted Crown run, we end up with three feel no pains, one of them even being offered with an upgrade. His lightning really does strike twice. Medkit over egg made a huge impact on this run. It really has. We've been uh, definitely playing lots of statuses. 
hey, a free corruption. You know, don't mind if I do. That sounds quite nice, in fact. See if any exhumes decide to show up. Seems unlikely. Well, you nerds later. Ornamental fan, giving us block for three attacks played in one turn. Not too bad. Seems like a pretty good turn one here. Uh, more than a pretty good turn one, actually. This is uh, going to kill Nemesis on turn one, is what this is. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Mail you later, nerd. Get out of here. No feed, but totally worth it. for you feed Pro probably okay. Alfredo, I think my win rates would drop if I had a second copy of Ascender's Bane at the start of each run quite a ways oh and chat still waiting on a dad joke redeem I thought we had done our four today Clearly I was wrong about that. Hmm. Did you hear about the ironclad that was put in charge of a bank? Unfortunately, he mismanaged it and it's since become a dead branch. No refunds to yet. Can't get your money back now. I almost uh, dug by accident there, looking at chat. What stat does Dead Branch show? How many cards it has generated? Currently an average of nearly three per turn. So three cards drawn per turn. A lot of cards. It's a lot of stuff. A lot of good. 
So, we are fighting the Awakened One. Someone asked, how do we fare against the Awakened One with all of these powers? The answer is hopefully just fine. I'll leave one of the birds alive. Don't think I'm going to play this Berserk. Excellent day. So how do we beat the Awakened One? We just play three offerings in one turn, apparently. That's how. And then everything is peachy. Then I have an Entrench. Pretty good. Let's uh, also double tap Body Slam to kill the Awakened One. And then do that again, basically. Briz, thanks for the Prime Sub in the three months. Yeah, Awakened One, uh, not so, not so much a problem. How about Donu and Dekka? Do they fare any better with this opening hand? I really doubt it. Oh yeah, they're they're toast. They are super toast. Could have actually killed Donu on turn one with Dupe Pot there. Uh, Decca dies on turn two. Okay. Rip Decca. And Donu's also dead. You know what? We're over. We're done. No need to feed. Let's just get the heck out of here. Two turn Donu Decca fight. Good riddance. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this, the heart of the spire, the source of all this silliness. We deal 2818, that number's huge. Have I been here before? Now we can dig. Get a paper frog, meaning vulnerable is even stronger. We're offered an Exhume. That's a great card. Can't buy Ori or any other Relic. Could buy a different potion. I like the Exhume, though. What's the most damage I've done to the heart in the preview? I think we've done over 3,000. The damage done to the heart there is based on your run's score. So the higher scoring your run, the more damage you'll deal there score is somewhat related to how well your run is going, but uh, it's got some idiosyncrasies to how it's calculated that make it a bit weird sometimes. Re Juggernaut, you shouldn't have. Feel free to give me statuses on top of the draw pile, see if I care. Can't hurt me. I am too powerful.
theoretically I should use a potion here, but whatever. It's not gonna matter. Not gonna matter. Get a pair, so we have 140 hit points. And if I want, I can take a Battle Trance, which actually does sound pretty good. Draw three cards for zero energy, and we cannot draw any more cards on our turn. Seems perfectly fine to me. Let's see, our duplication in this fight, probably the upgraded Feel No Pain, although there is room for other options here. Dark Embrace is very welcome here. Is that an Elden Ring display? Sure is. It sure is. First barricade, yes, but what about second barricade? What about entrench? Wait, I'm not done. Okay, now I'm done. Bonk. Play all the powers. Why not? How long can you let heart scale, says Fanda Oro. Not as long as you might think, because the heart scales its multi-attack frighteningly quickly. Um, even if you have 999 block, the maximum the game will allow you to have, um, letting the heart scale beyond turn... I think it's 16 or 17. Um, it'll be able to attack for more than 1,000 damage. But the answer is not not even 20 turns. Not very long. This heart this fight is definitely on a timer. If you have calipers and entrench, you might find a way to cheat. Just maybe. What about third barricade? Wraith form is a way to keep surviving. Deals 1,697 damage. All right. Okay then. GG, Mr. Hart. GG. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next, and don't forget to follow on Twitch to watch the content live. Click the link in the description below.